guys, welcome to my channel. It's been a minute. Um, so for those of you who are just joining in for the first time or are returning after my very long hiatus, welcome back to Brick Road Co. on YouTube. I kind of took an abrupt stop when COVID started. So if you'll reference the last video that I have posted, it is actually a traveling haul video from the very moment things really started to go down here in the United States with uh, COVID. We took a small trip to Nebraska and did a thrift trip. And when we were in the middle of that trip, I actually got really sick and we suspect it may have been COVID actually, but um, I was not tested because there wasn't testing available at that point in time. And it wasn't even declared a pandemic at that point. And then when we returned from that trip, I uploaded my thrift haul video and then like crap hit the fan and it's just been really weird. So thank you for coming back. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, I would love if you do so, but I do have a big announcement. I'm going to be kind of shifting my content a little bit. As many of you know, I am a multi-platform reseller on a lot of different apps, but uh, with COVID and with the way things have changed with sourcing and whatnot, I've kind of shifted my business model a little bit towards where I wanted to ultimately be anyhow. So I started out selling on Poshmark in 2015, but I've been on the app since 2013, and I started selling reselling full-time in 2018. Since then, I have added on seven platforms. So I now sell on seven slash eight platforms full time. Um, I have built back my income from working at a nonprofit. So I'm actually most months making exactly what I made with a master's degree at a nonprofit. On top of that, I have started my Etsy store. So with COVID and the lack of sourcing, I decided it would be a really good opportunity for me to start developing my website brickroadco.com which is still kind of in the works and also i thought it would be a great idea to start broadening my niche to what i wanted to do ultimately anyhow so one of my goals as a reseller is to be sustainable and keep items out of landfills and help save the environment with that being said, one of my large business goals that I set in 2018 was to open an Etsy shop and create goods that are upcycled and reworked that may have otherwise been uh, thrown away. So as I've been thrifting the past two years, I've actually accumulated an entire guest room closet full of fabrics, white shirts, uh, graphic tees, damaged items, and notions so I could start this amazing project. And since starting that, I have opened my Etsy shop and I've gotten around 20 sales there on Etsy since starting that. The, the cool thing is, is I would have a lot more sales on Etsy, but often I'm promoting my items on Instagram and they're selling out on Instagram before I can even get them listed on Etsy. I would probably have a lot more sales on Etsy if I was just listing those products there, but I am utilizing Instagram for my business and making direct sales there as well. So with that being said, I just wanna welcome you guys back let you know that my channel is going to be shifting to reflect my overall content that you can find over on Instagram and TikTok already. And that's really overall reseller content. So before I was focused on hauls and $5 challenges and thrifting challenges and like how to use the app Poshmark. But as I go forward, I'm going to be doing a lot more crafts and DIYs showing you a lot more of my lifestyle and just how sustainable we live. So we are not perfect by any means and we have a lot of work to do with sustainability, but we do implement a lot of upcycling and sustainability in our lives on a regular basis. And so I wish to show you guys all avenues of that as well as how to be a multi-platform reseller and really open up multiple streams of income. So I hope you guys stay tuned for my um, new channel, my reworked channel, I'm really excited. And to kick things off today, I'm actually going to be doing a Cricut tutorial. So if you follow me on Instagram, you've probably been watching me or even on TikTok lately showing my new stickers that I've been making with my Cricut. And some of them are branded with my name on them. Some of them are just more reflective of like my overall loves like succulents and flowers and plants and, and whatnot. And so I've been taking those stickers and just experimenting with my Cricut maker to see how to do print then cut stickers and just trying to learn a little bit about overall how to use the Cricut. So when I posted, um, <clears throat> excuse me, so when I posted earlier this week on Instagram, I had a request from several people on how to do tutorials for how to make these stickers on your Cricut maker with, you know, different little pictures and how you can brand yourself to do so. So I thought why not share with the reselling community how I have been building my brand and how I've been using my Cricut maker in a lot of different ways to do so. So today's video, I am going to go over how I am using my Cricut Maker to generate print then cut stickers 
to throw into my packaging for freebies and to brand my business. So I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. Let me know what else you'd like to see in the future and I'm happy to be back, but it's gonna be taking a different, different direction. And um, we'll get into some of the reasons for that in a future video, but let's just say this is kind of the direction I wanted to go anyway, so I'm really happy to be doing that. So here we go, how to use a Cricut Maker to brand your business and make stickers to give away to people and overall just have fun. So let's do this. Option one is to create your design within an app called Canva, and you can use that on the web. So it's really easy to just go to canva.com and create a new design. Then if you want to save the design as a PNG file onto whatever file within your computer, whatever folder you want, we will save that to retrieve later. Next option is to access free stock photos and vectored images. So there's several different websites that you can do this on. And depending on what type of images you're looking for, whether they're a little bit more realistic or maybe more of a cartoon image, you can definitely find a lot of royalty free and vectored images online for free. So we will go through and download a few of our favorite images and save them to the same folder that we saved the Canva image for retrieval in the Cricut design space here in a moment. So I just looked up the term lemons and you can see me scrolling through different lemons on this particular website, but there's tons of different websites that you can use. As you can see, this one has a little bit more of like the drawing types of images, but what you want is transparent PNG images. Those are going to be the ones that work the best for the sticker creation in Cricut Design Space. So let's head over to Cricut Design Space now and open up a new project. So within Cricut Design Space, then you want to hit the upload button over on the left hand side. And what you're going to do is go browse through and find those transparent PNG files that you just downloaded from the internet. And now again, you wanna make sure that those are royalty free and vectored images and that they're approved for personal use and that there's no copyright issues there. I don't sell any of my stickers. I'm just giving them away uh, for branding and for freebies. So um, I'm not looking to make a profit off of these and they're more for personal use. So right now I hit the upload button and I grabbed an image and now what I'm doing is going through the prompts and it wants you to pick whether it's a print then cut or a cut image. So we're going to select for all stickers print then cut. Then when we hit the next button it's going to essentially save this transparent PNG with no background exactly how you see it on the design space right now. Then you can start selecting the different stickers that you've uploaded one by one, and you can make a sheet of stickers. So you can see some of the images that I've been uploading over the past couple of weeks for branding purposes, and the one that I just added through the prompts. So now we're just going to start assembling our sticker sheet by bringing in the different images that we have found off the internet and saved to a folder on our computer I just save mine to a folder that has like a bunch of random clip art for branding purposes so then you can play around with the sizes of stickers that you want it will show you obviously within Cricut design space exactly what size you just want to make sure that all of them are print then cut images and the sticker sheet that I have is eight and a half by eleven so I try to fit it within like a seven by ten space so that way it will all print onto one sheet now real quick I want to review if you wanted to add text on top of an image I find the best way to do this is actually prior to uploading it into Cricut design space so if you found a transparent PNG that you really like but you want wanted to add maybe your brand name, for instance, how I'm adding Brick Road Co. to this little cactus, I actually go back to Canva and I upload that transparent PNG within Canva and then use a font that I like and add my name or whatever I'm wanting to add to the sticker for text. And then I upload that in its entirety into Cricut Design Space. Now you can add text when you're in Cricut Design Space if you want, but I've had some issues with how that works with print then cut and it doesn't always want to print on one sheet. And as a beginner, I'm sure there's a solution to that, but I find using Canva is a lot easier. 
Now here is a quick tip. You can use the select and erase button if you find that one of your stickers still has white around the edges. So on the mason jar, I uploaded it into Cricut Design Space originally and it had a white border around it that I didn't want. So I went back and re-uploaded it and then I used the select and erase tool within Cricut Design Space to take away that extra white background. So let's get started on the printing and cutting of the actual stickers. So the first thing we're gonna do is hit the make it button and then we're going to make sure we have the right format as far as our sticker paper. We're going to hit the print button. So you're actually going to load your sticker paper into a standard inkjet printer and then go ahead and print as you would anything else. So we picked up just to play around this Astro Design matte sticker paper from Walmart and it's okay, I don't really like it so I've ordered some different stuff but it's good for experimenting. So what I did is loaded two pieces of that paper into my inkjet printer and sent it off to the printer to be printed before we cut it. And we're printing. Sweet. And after we've printed, we select our material and I have mine favorited because I have been playing around with sticker paper for a couple weeks now. So I select sticker paper removable and make sure that the pressure is set to default. Then I go ahead and put my printed sticker paper onto a soft grip mat Follow the prompts, hit the buttons, and watch that baby cut stickers. Yay! Now, if this is your first time using print then cut, you may not be aware of what the black lines are around the edge of the paper. That's actually for your Cricut to sense where your stickers are exactly, so that way the cuts are made exactly the where they're supposed to on your stickers. Additionally, there is one option to select something called bleed on your stickers when you print. That gives like a little bit of a border around the sticker. So often when you see stickers, there's like some of the image left over on the sticker sheet when you peel the sticker off. It's kind of giving you that room for error. So I always select that option so that way I've got a little bit of wiggle room. Now there's a ton of different ways that you could actually take the stickers and weed them from the grip mat, but what I do is take an X-Acto knife and I just cut around each of the stickers kind of pretty roughly at first just to get each sticker more individualized. Then I go back with either a small pair of scissors or the X-Acto knife and I cut around the sticker to give it more of an exact edge and make it look a little bit more precise. So this is what the stickers look like after I have cut around them with the X-Acto knife and done a little bit of trimming just for the purpose of this video but I think they turned out really cute. Now these are more of a matte paper kind of sticker, so these would not be waterproof, but there is a method that you can use to make these more glossy and waterproof, which I will be doing a tutorial on next week. Um, this one's my favorite right now. I just think it's adorable. I love mason jars and terrariums and succulents, so I'm gonna slap one of these bad boys on my own laptop. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Please let me know in the comments if you have any other Cricut tutorials that you would like to see. And please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. And if you'd like to be notified of my upcoming videos, don't forget to hit that bell notification. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more. Bye.